Hey everyone, this week I'm back again with another update on the old Hydra Fiend. It's going to be our third installment, kind of a short hobby blog, blog, vlog, on what we're up to. Specifically, I'm going to be adding some hazard stripes to the arms of the Hydra Fiend here. And to get started, I'm going to mask off some of the other bits of the Hydra Fiend to Make sure that I don't have any overspray from my airbrush. What I'm using here is Silly Putty. I have a nice big egg of it, thanks to my lovely wife. Got me an expansive supply of Silly Putty. And I'm just kind of stretching this out in sheets and wrapping it around the rest of the arms to make sure that we don't have any overspray when we apply some, get this, purple. The other bit that we'll be covering here is setting up some of the blue-violet tones for the lasher tendrils. So it's going to be a little bit of uh, base work with that, and then I'll show you exactly how I set up kind of a kind of a fading glow and get that ready for some next steps. So again, this is kind of a in-between hobby vlog. It's been a bit of a busy week, so I found some time to hobby and thought I'd share with you all. So for the workup, this is going to be my traditional workup of my purples. And we're going to be applying a bit of black, which I already have down here. Follow that up with some Vallejo Model Color Violet. Then Sunset Purple. Emperor's Children, and then mixing a little bit of white in that Emperor's Children for a high value pink. Now you'll see that over the surface of this, I'm kind of giving this a bit of a shine, a bit of a sheen, um, but I am saturating most of the panels with the violet right now. I want to make sure that everything has a little bit of color, a little bit of saturation. Moving on to the mid-tone here, I'm going to kind of focus that in. <clears throat> and make that a little bit more metallic looking as much as possible. That'll follow through with the next couple of steps. Again, pushing that shine just a bit, making sure I've got a little bit of color over the entirety of the panel, even if it's a bit dark like in the more violet areas. Moving the Silly Putty here is pretty easy. Uh, part of the reason that I like using Silly Putty is that it's non-adhesive. It just kind of forms around whatever you kind of stick it onto, so it just kind of physically grips. doesn't leave any residue, seems to eat things like paint and ink, and is pretty reusable, so it's a really nice airbrushing mask. So we've got some nice panel fades here, and this sets us up pretty well. You can see we've gone for a semi-metallic sheen. Kind of like this is a panel that's semi-reflective, not hyper-reflective or anything. But this will be good set up for some nice purple hazard stripes. <clears throat> now to offset this, we're just going to use plain black from Vallejo Model Color. And I'm going to get that out onto our wet palette here. Well, 
Well, oops, I did kind of the first little bit of this off camera. Not a big deal. It's a repeat process. I'm doing the same thing I'm doing here. I make a lead line, and in this case, I'm matching the angle of the initial line. And I don't start as close as I think I should be, but I kind of start in the general area where I think I should start and kind of expand that line until it's thick enough and the purple and the black kind of match in width or at least close enough. Now you might be asking, if I've got an airbrush, why don't I do this with a stencil or some sort of masking? And the answer is twofold. Um, one, the ability for me to get a stencil or a mask into the confined space here between this and the neck head area is a bit tough and it's going to fit awkwardly, especially over the edges of this trim. So it could be quite a bit of work to do that. And additionally, this is also a curved surface. So not only being able to access it, the texture of the surface, also the curvature of the surface makes stenciling and masking a little bit more difficult. So I actually tend to do my striping with freehand. And even after you're done with this, if you don't quite like the look, you can get a little bit more depth with some highlighting. But I generally like the look of what I'm getting on here. Again, take it slow, make a little bit of a lead line and expand slowly. Long strokes as much as possible. You'll see me taking small strokes as normal and then intermittently take a nice long deep stroke to get a nice solid line that doesn't have any sketchiness to it. If you're a little bit off, no big deal. If it's really kind of way off, you might have to go back in with something like the purple, the undercolor, and kind of touch up a little bit, kind of blend in and match. I decided to go ahead and hit some of the trim here with some of our metallics that we'll be using. I'm using some Vallejo metal color uh, steel and this is unfinished. This will need to be washed and highlighted afterwards for full effect but I wanted to make sure that the hazard striping looked good in a general sense with the rest of the scheme because it kind of looks off without the trim kind of cutting around it. So I think overall I'm liking what I'm getting. I can always go back in and touch these up just a little bit and I'm being careful not to get my paint too thick either. But overall looking good. Now I can go ahead and start on the other side. All right, I've finished up the striping, put on some trim here, liking what I'm seeing so far. Decided to go ahead and use a little bit more of the metallic that I had out to hit some of the other trim areas, which again are going to have to be finished, but uh, it, it's giving me an overall picture of how the model is looking so far, and I'm liking it. You might be wondering why I'm not doing non-metallic on the rest of this trim, and the answer is twofold. One, it's a lot. That's a lot of work. Two, this is what I've been using on the previous models already, so this looks okay, this looks good, and it fits. I, I kind of like the hybrid between the two, and I might eventually move this over to a pure non-metallic, but for right now, I'm going to be just highlighting this out. Now, I do use some of the same techniques between the two, and that's something that I will 
show off as I continue on with this project. All right, after a little bit of tooling here, just getting some more bass tones down, I think I'll go ahead and switch off what I'm working on with the Hydrophene, and let's work on its alternate weapons a little bit. And I've got the Lasher tendrils out here, and I do have these magnetized along with the magma cutters, and I'm gonna be, as with most of the weapons on my liquefactors, highlighting these out with a blue dominant purple tone. So the first thing that I actually need to do here is go ahead and hit the metallic tubing and get that kind of in place because the airbrushing that I'm going to do is going to go over all of this and I want a nice even fade and that will work even if I don't finish highlighting all of this out going into the fade. Mostly what I'm going to be setting up is going to be unfinished as well, but this is a really important thing to show on how I get the kind of glowing effects that I get. Once I've got the steel based in, I'm gonna take some Vallejo Violet in my base color and work in these little kind of intermittent tube joint things, whatever these are. I'm gonna do these in the purple non-metallic as I go. Now this isn't going to be something that I focus on right now, and I'm actually leaving the last few of them undone because I'm going to paint right over them in a solid black tone. Alright, we've got the airbrush loaded up. Initially here with some black, we're going to be moving through black, then violet, then blue violet, and blue horror to get the highlights done here. This is gonna be a progressive workup. What you're noticing here most likely is that I am painting over some of my previous work with the black, and this is to set up a strong contrast in light. The darker the area around the light indicates that the relative lighting is kind of overpowering the ambient uh, lighting all around. Now this is the bro science of lighting, but that's kind of the way that I look at it, and this will give us an enhanced look at the end. Now, one thing that I'm not going to cover here is edge highlighting this, but that will really make it pop in the end. But for right now, let's just let's set up the glow. Let's get that started. Thank you. 
All right, so after a little bit of airbrushing, we are set up to do some hand highlighting. I am gonna hold off on that. Let's take a quick look at what our current status is. Now, one thing that I am noticing is the magnet on one of these connections is not really holding very tight, so I'm not getting a very solid connection on that. I might have to adjust that. Not a big deal. Even after starting the paint job, not a big deal to make some alterations to the model. And get that worked out but I want to get a good look at what the overall composition is looking like and I'm happy with it. Uh, the kind of blue areas around are really kind of offsetting some of the warmer reddish purples uh, already and the non-metallic is still kind of poking through and punching through and our steel is looking subdued kind of as it should be. So everything compositionally is looking pretty good. There's a lot going on here, so I'm a little bit worried about it being busy, but so far so good. So thank you for joining me once again for more work on this project. Can't wait to see you again as we continue slogging through this one. And I can't wait to show off what we do next. Have a great week. Enjoy your paint and see you next time.